Holton's Monday Morning Critic Podcast. And this is Mark Holton. My next guest has been in some wonderful things such as My Life, Leprechaun, A League of Their Own, The Naked Gun, Pee-wee's Big Adventure, and The Impeccable Teen Wolf. Please welcome Mark Holton. Mark, thanks for being on the podcast today. Thank you for asking me, Derek. Um, I... Uh... I this this past weekend I my table was right next to Vernon Wells and I didn't listen to the podcast until after the con the convention and I'm glad I didn't because I was already so so in awe of him I would have been a blithering idiot <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah he has that effect he had that effect on me too and and if I might say uh you know, podcast or any interview. Uh, that was uh, one of the best interviews I've ever watched in my life. Thank oh, you. Oh, wow. For, you know, sending that to me. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Oh, Mark, thank you for that. That means a lot to me. Um, but so it's funny that you mentioned the Comic Con. I'm curious to know how you like it and um, your experience with the whole thing because you were sharing pictures on your Instagram account the whole time and it looked like you were having a blast. Well, uh, I don't. I don't share in real time. I share after the fact. Right, right. But um, I haven't done that many. I was having a blast, by the way. Yeah. Uh, the, the first one I did was uh, Indianapolis, which I'm going to return to in uh, July. Wow. Uh, and um, it was quite a, a learning experience. It was a horror con, or a, a horror hound to be specific. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, and then COVID hit, so my new uh, my new adventure came to a screeching halt, just like uh, the rest of the planet. And uh, I've I've been back. I've done uh, horror related co conventions, uh, comic cons, fan fests, and and I'm just I'm loving it. Uh, it's everyone's you know its own animal, <laughs> so you never yeah. know. You never know. I mean, you know, it, it, I I. You know, this one was special because I was my neighbor at the table right across from me or, or right next to me was Vernon Wells. And then, uh, you know, there were a lot of other people and everyone I talked to there was just wonderful. Uh, lots of vendors. It's just it's just a different world. You, you never know what you're going to encounter. It might be uh, wrestlers and a yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's wackadoodle, you know, and, yeah. and uh, I'm looking around and, you know, a lot of these things, I have no frame of reference until after the con, uh, because, uh, you know, it's a good place for me to learn uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, what's out in the big wide world. And, and what's funny is for those listening or watching on YouTube, um, so what's really, because when Mark and I were planning, you know, a date for Mark to sit and talk with me, and Mark was so great about it, um, I had told him, because he told me he was going to the Horror Con. Is that, is that, what, it, is that what the pop, proper name of it, Mark? Is? It was actually called uh, Fan Fest. Ohio Fan, Fan Fest. Yes. Yeah, and then, so, and I said, you know, I'm looking at the roster of people going, and I said, I ha Vernon Wells is going. Um, he's in so many wonderful projects, and I said, Mark, he's been on the podcast, and how funny is it that he ends up next to you? What what a small world this is, Mark, right? I know, and uh, uh, wow, what a gentleman. I, I was thoroughly impressed with him, and uh, got to have dinner with him, and um, and talk with him when there would be slow times in between uh, traffic to our tables. Yeah, and uh, he he's just uh, you missed uh, a lot of stories, so you need to. Definitely have him back, and I know I know he'd come back. I mean, you know, why wouldn't you after an interview like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. And you know, I have to say, um, I've heard, I, I've seen some of your interviews, and I've heard you say, I almost feel like you found out after the fact that people really loved you. I, mean, I know you you knew that people loved your work, but but as far as the Comic Con part of it goes. I, I feel like you didn't realize how many people really loved your work. Is that kind of accurate, Mark? That's completely accurate. I was just absolutely no frame of reference. Uh, to me, uh, Comic Con was where people went and traded copies of the Superman and Batman <laughs> and other comics, and I never looked into it. It was just it, it didn't didn't appeal to me. And somehow, you know, I, I missed out on that. Even though, you know, the San Diego Comic Con has been around for what 
this is a, what, the 51st year? Yeah, it's huge. So, um, yeah, I was, I was totally in the dark. I, I actually had quit the business. Yeah. Left California, and um, I got tracked down and uh, ended up reading the script for uh, Leprechaun Returns and went to South Africa, filmed that. And on my way back, uh, the last leg of the journey was from Dallas to Tulsa, Oklahoma. And the plane was delayed leaving Dallas. And I had been in the air for probably 40 hours. Wow. So I, I turned around and looked, and there's, a, I think, the Admiral's Club or one of those things. So I stumbled over there, and I thought, well, no, I, I'm not going to get a bourbon. <laughs> I'm just I'm, I'm just too whacked out or whatever. And coffee, you know, I've already had about 15 gallons. I'll just get a nice herb tea. Yeah. And um, the uh, they had a nice little area near the tea uh, with the couches and love seats and stuffed chairs and and I'm passing behind this one couch or love seat, I, I don't remember. And um, as I'm passing it, I hear this man and catch just a sliver of his face. And I'm going, I, you know, I know that voice. Who is that? So I went around behind the petition, made my tea, and I decided to come out the other side so I could see who it was, get a good shot at him. And I uh, came around the corner, and damn it, it was with Paul Rubens. Wow. Yeah, what are the chances? And, uh, of course, I was all, you know, I was dressed in black, and I had those uh, little woolly things that stick to your clothing from the airline blankets, and I, I just looked like a mess, I'm sure. I looked like I had rolled out of a dumpster, I'm sure. And uh, I started walking up, and uh, <laughs> he is looking at the people, you know, to his left and right, like, uh, security alert, security alert. <laughs> <laughs> and I just stopped and started laughing, and I said, Paul, it's Mark Holton. He goes, what the hell are you doing here? I don't know. What are you doing here? <laughs> and um, it, it turns out he, he was uh, flying back to California from doing a, a big convention in Dallas. Wow. Wow. So, uh, you know, we always communicated with each other on your birthdays and, and the Christmas, of course. And Happy New Year. Uh, but uh, he was just uh, wonderful. I've been a wonderful friend of me and uh, clued me in. Yeah. To the convention business or whatever, and I'm, I'm glad he did. Uh, and uh, you, you never know, you know. I, I tried to quit, you know. I, I, was, I was done with it, but you don't got one through with me yet. No, we, and, and we, um, we got, okay. you know, what is it that you love so much, Mark, about Oklahoma? Well, it's, uh, it's, it's just more of a casual existence in Southern California. Um, you know, and there's a million reasons financially, taxes, uh, cheapest fuel in the country. Yeah. Uh, and and everything was is within, you know, not even an hour of uh, where I live. Uh, you know, I've got uh, Costco. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Trader Joe's and Whole Foods and Sprouts. Uh, so, uh, you know, and... Uh, you know, we have uh, aircraft now that actually bring fish to you wherever you are. Wow. So uh, I couldn't really think of a good reason not to move back to Oklahoma. Yeah. Uh, I just, uh, both my sons were out of school and uh, we were, uh, you know, just, you know, well, what are we going to do now? So my, uh, my sweet neighbor, my only neighbor, who uh, finally passed away at 102 years old. Wow. Uh, had to go into a uh, uh, living facility, an assisted living facility, and her son and daughter-in-law uh, had put her house on the market, and I had a conversation with the realtor, and uh, I didn't want to be rude and ask, you know, how much she was going to list it for. Uh, but she said, well, I, you know, I can come by and talk to uh, you and your wife. And I said, well, I'm right there. You know, there's only one other house at the end of this road. And um, and she dropped by and threw out a number. And uh, Lisa and I looked at each other and went, well, thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> and, 
and that just that started the ball rolling. I just thought, you know, if if you're if you're trying to play the market, you're never going to top ticket. Right. And right. I'd rather get out too early than find out it's too late. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and housing is crazy now. Like I know I live in Massachusetts, and if a house is listing for four hundred, uh, people are offering four fifty, four seventy five. Right. Like. It's yeah. like it's it's this different like beast. I can't get over it, Mark. Yeah. Well, well, this was pre-COVID, but it had started in Southern California just because of the lack of housing. Right. And uh, and then you know if 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 you uh, if you wait too long, uh, you know, just a week or a month under these uh, circumstances could meet the difference uh, between you actually finding in the first <laughs> place what you can yeah. afford. And what, uh, so, uh, you know, this is probably not a good time to do it. If, if you're moving from California, this is a bitching time to, you know, relocate. Yes. Uh, but, it, but it's, you know, it's going on uh, all, all over the country. So you're, you're going to pay more uh, where you're going, but the prices won't be as high. So. Yeah, and and the beauty of acting now and, and technology and, and 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 you know doing you know dem um not demos uh, doing auditions and right. you know you don't you don't have to be in California you don't I mean not many people have to you know get in their car and go to California now like you could be a perfectly fine actor from Oklahoma or Arkansas it doesn't matter where it's you know yeah it, it, well, you know why 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 should I uh, slog it out through uh, you know uh, the sewer by the sea. Come to your damned office. Yeah, yeah. You know, let's, yeah. let's just let's just well, let what you and I are doing right now. Absolutely, it's that simple. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and, and, and there is one more thing I wanted to add to the Comic Con thing that you, you said. I, I think this was you that said this. Um, you know, seeing your work through the eyes of fans, I thought that was a uh, really profound. That's like a profound. I never like I cover Comic Cons all the time. I I've stopped. You know, before, when COVID hit, I'll be back this summer again. But I have to say, it's like, I never thought of it that way, but the way you phrased it, perfect, perfect. Yeah, I, I was, uh, well, thank you. Uh, I was completely unaware in the dark, uh, you know, 10, 20 years later from, for some of these films. Uh, I think the example I gave was you could be in a doctor's office and you are thumbing through something, killing time, and it says, you know, uh, America's top 50 uh, cult films of all time and you see like Pee-wee's Big Adventure and you're going why? It's been 20 years. My God. Well, I guess people just loved it. And uh, you know, then when uh, 30 years go by and you have all these generations of people that started out on VHS and they had to get it on VHS. They either had to rent it or buy it or see it in the theater. Uh, and then they have children and they say, you know what, you know what you need to watch. Come here, you know, whatever. And, and they, and all of a sudden the kids going, this is the funniest thing I've ever seen. And, uh, and, and now I'm, I'm like three or four generations deep with, with a series of films that were done in the genre or, or the, uh, the time period that you cover. Mm. So I, I didn't realize, uh, I was always my own worst critic. Um, so that was something I just, you know, that was then. Uh, and uh, so uh, I had to kind of grips with that and accept it. Yeah. Which was not, not easy, but it wasn't that hard. Uh, I just, uh, you know, uh, it was just a, a different way of view viewing my life. Right. And uh, uh, the, the, the moment that really... Uh, hit me. I mean, it hit me. It, it, it uh, I mean, I, I was uh, ready to, to just break down. Uh, I had to keep my shit wired tight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this big old guy came up to me and said, can I have a hug? And I said, sure. And uh, we embraced and he bent down and whispered in my ear, you were part of my childhood. Wow. And uh, I had to, uh, you know, I, I had to process that, uh, you know, I, uh, you know, I jokingly, you know, I told my wife, uh, well, I feel like Captain Kangaroo. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, Captain Kangaroo was loved and Mr. Rogers was loved and 
that's a good comparison. It's the same type of love. It is. It's the same yeah. type of love. That's a great comparison, Mark. Great comparison. Yeah. Uh, but but when when he did that, you must have been like, like you said, you're seeing it through somebody else's eyes, right? Oh yeah. I mean, I didn't know it meant that much, and then yeah. when you start getting. Uh, you know, at the first con convention, Derek, I had a couple come out. I think it was the second, uh, the second people to to you know in line at my table, and uh, the uh, the husband said, "We've been looking for you online for years, and we were thank you for coming out so we could meet you. We're just glad you're not dead." <laughs> <Said me too. laughs> <laughs> that's great you, you know and i have to say you mentioned vhs earlier mark do you know i'm speaking of comic cons do you know like the hottest thing now that's selling for uh, hundreds if not thousands are unopened vhs movies it's I like know. you know it's insane like what, what i'm telling you we're gonna get to the the, the 80s and the genre but i wanted to read one more quote I love of you. I love of yours. And this will be the last quote I read, I promise. But this was so profound. I loved it. Uh, you said the best of pop culture has endured because nothing has really replaced it. It represents moments in time during people's lives. You don't have to experience it in real time to have nostalgic, fe nostalgic feels about it. It's shared, enjoyed, and passed on. That, my friend, is beautiful. Well, thank you. I, I, uh, well, see, it's nice to know that that was beautiful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you, Eric. But but it's it, it sums up why people put their arms around the '80s and love it and refuse to let go. That's that's exactly it. I mean, that's nailed it. I, mean, yeah. I could have said it better myself. That's perfect, perfect. Um, I, I I was looking at your life, and I have to say, uh, when you were I think in high school, you had an interesting choice because you've told this story before. You weren't doing well in school, and there, there was and you can tell this a lot better than I can, but. The choice, I want to say it was like a drama club, but your choice of performance was from yeah. Patton, I think. You decided to do Patton, which my dad and I, one of the many movies we bonded to, that opening scene is so kick ass. And I'm picturing a young Mark doing this scene in front of other high school kids, and I couldn't stop laughing. Oh, this this is just to say my grade in English. I hadn't even gotten into speech and theater yet. Uh, <laughs> so it was my freshman year. So you've got this chubby freshman standing up in front of the student body, delivering the speech. And uh, of course, you know, I was an idiot. I thought, well, how's this going to go over uh, on the buckle of the Bible belt in 1972? And um, well, I, you know, it w went over good. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I got called to the principal's office and he said, you know, we don't use that language in this school, Mr. Holton. And he said, go, good job. Go back to class. I went, Missed the bullet. Uh, and I won my little gold medal. I still have it. So, uh, yeah, that was the that was the spark, the genesis. That's when I uh, uh, started putting together what my calling was, uh, I guess, was at that moment. Is there, a, um, I guess maybe you just gave me the answer to my next question. Is there a actor or a movie that sparked it? I mean, I guess maybe it was Pat, uh, uh, George C. Scott and Patton. But is there a, an actor or a movie that did it for you when you were younger? Um. I, I wasn't looking at it through that lens at that time, but, but gotcha. films that uh, one of the films that that's that still uh, inspire me uh, is uh, Charles Lawton in uh, uh, the uh, in uh, the uh, Notre Dame, yeah, and uh, as a Quasimodo, and I I, uh, I just uh, you know I, I, that's the stuff I wanted to do, you know I didn't necessarily want all the prosthetics and everything. But that's the kind of actor I wanted to be because he could be Cosimoto and then he could be a very proper, you know, gentleman. He right. could do comedy. He could do, you know, heavy duty uh, characters. Uh, what is it in, in Julius Caesar? Uh, he's, he's a Roman senator. And it was just, uh, you know, so any, any stories I heard about him, I, you know, I filed away Rod Steiger was another yeah. influence, and of course, Brando. Um, and then, you know, later on, I mean, every, you know, decade, I, I find new uh, people to learn from. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I, I would have to say that, that early on, you know, besides, you know, what I watched, like the Pythons, uh, 
I'm, I'm sure that colored my sense of humor, you know, greatly. <laughs> yeah. Did yeah. everybody else, so, you know, would have naturally done mine. Now, uh, there wasn't a whole lot of, you know, stuff to watch on TV back when I was growing up. Right. And uh, so, you know, Three Stooges, Abacus and Costello, Laurel and Hardy, um, which, uh, you know, a lot of that stuff still stands up now. So uh, you you still that's that's a great answer by the way all all of what you said but you you stole my next question why so my my wife and I every New Year's we watch the Stooges, we watch the Stooges more than just one day a year but we were watching one the other day where the Stooges get called over to a house to fix the plumbing in the house and they just put on a shit show I mean water's coming through electrical outlets it's but why is uh -huh. it why is it funny seventy years sixty years later because I feel like. I watch comedies today that are coming on Netflix, that are coming on uh, Prime or whatever, that I don't laugh uh -huh. once at. But here I am watching the Stooges episode or a Laurel and Hardy episode that I've seen 5,000 times that was what was filmed years ago. And it stands the test of time like it never even, like time never even passed. What is oh. the secret there, you think, Mark? What do you, what do you oh. think it is? I don't know what the secret is, uh, except that, uh, you know, with the Stooges, uh, you had uh, uh, Curly were, was my favorite uh, as the third stooge. Yeah. So anything that Curly did, uh, I, I prefer to uh, episodes with Shimp or Curly Joe, I believe, later on. Uh, but, uh, you know, his stuff is, is just golden. You know, he had the silly voice and the <laughs> uh, And then, you know, you have these divine, de defined characters and what's funny is uh, they're pain. They're hurting yeah. each other. Yeah. But it's, it's uh, oh, uh, I was attempting when I was a very young man to, to, to talk about that. And I, I think part of the poem that I've long since uh, burned probably was something about, uh, you know, in a room hang, uh, hang two chickens. One is rubber. And one is a real dead chicken. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But, but born of pain, the words they have no meaning. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah. yeah. Comedy's a, a you know, there, there are, you know, several definitions out there uh, that, that are much better than anything I can give you here, Gary. Yeah. But your appreciation is just, it, it, it just shows, I mean, that's some of the best stuff ever made. Um, you know, and, and as, as talented as you are, and we're going to get to your filmography in a moment, and, and as, as wonderful as you are, you know, I've heard you tell your story about how it came to be. How much do you think luck and circumstance play, not in just your life, but other actors, other directors, other composers? How much, how much do you think, because I know in your case, and, and you'll tell this better than I will, uh, is that, you know, you 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 had a friend who kind of knew a friend that lived in, in California at the time, who I think mm -hmm. ended up being a casting director, which led to one of the best shows, your your very first, I think, SAG uh, voucher or SAG credit, um, Webster, which is honestly one of the more underrated shows of the 80s. So just talk a little bit about that, Mark, whatever you want to say. Well, you, you pretty much covered it. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't I didn't know I had been to New York uh and I, I, I just happened to, to watch a, a, a late night. I'm going to put things in a nutshell because I've already done this extensively. But, yeah. but in a nutshell, I was watching late night television and the actor being interviewed was asked, yeah. why did you choose Los Angeles over Broadway? And he said, I was from a small town. I knew myself and I knew I would uh, psychologically do a lot better rubbing bumpers than elbows. And I thought, well, that's that's me. So I decided to go uh, where I had never been before. And a, a college, uh, college buddy uh, had, had been out there. He was going back and forth and, and made a, a friend and uh, said, Hey, you know, look out for Holton. He, he's coming out there showing where to look for an apartment and uh, telling me, you know, what areas to avoid. And uh, the guy goes, well, where's he going to stay? He goes, you know, I don't know. And he said, well, just tell him to come stay with us. So, you know, that was uh, divine intervention number one. Right. Uh, and I get there and meet his wife, and uh, it turns out that she's a cast, an assistant casting director at Paramount Pictures. Wow. I'm going, wow, you know, I, I hope you remember me. So <laughs> I'll, I'll make sure that I'm a good guest. <laughs> uh, 
And then she said, you know, I have to read against all these people all day long. How would you feel about coming in and just reading against the people auditioning for different roles? And I said, hook me up. I mean, my God, you could go on a pirate, you know, the Paramount lot. You never know who you're going to see. And, he, and then I ended up reading against people that I had grown up watching. Wow. I'm going, man, this is great. And uh, damned if, if uh, when they had everything cast or whatever, the, uh, the, uh, the Sunshines uh, were producing and writing. And they said, well, you know what? Uh, you have entertained us this week. And uh, uh, we, we're going to write you... Uh, into the final episode of the season so you can get your SAG card. And, uh, you know, at, at some point, Marianne Barton was the casting director's name. And I, I said, you know, why? Why am I having such good luck and fortune at one point? She said, it's simple. Good things happen to good people. Oh, so nice. Yeah. What was that experience on Webster? Was that, um, did you have to kind of pinch yourself? Because you're, I mean, honestly, like you, that show was it, that show, when that show was on, that show was it. So more people had to see you on that show yeah. than anything you could have done. Were you, was it surreal for you, Mark? Well, yes, it was. Um, uh, but I, I, I must be totally honest. I, you know, I was, I was just coming out of, uh, the theater, whatever, and I had a little bit of contempt for uh, sitcoms in general. Uh, but uh, I, uh, I was, I was, when it hit me, uh, the gravity of the situation I was in was uh, they were waiting to go up in front of a, a live audience, and uh, one of the producers popped his head in my dressing room and said, I don't want to make you nervous or anything, but more people will watch you tonight than saw Caruso his entire career. Wow. Wow. Well, gee, thanks for that. <laughs> bud, <you know? laughs> no pressure there. No, no, not at all. Yeah. Jesus. Um, yeah. You know, and, and, I, and I want to touch upon um, just a few here. Um, but, on the topic of Pee Wee's Big Adventure, right? So Francis Buxton is always somebody that I had a love-hate relationship with. Um, that same year that it came out, my dad bought me a red line bike. He saved up for it. I love this bike. I want to say two days after I got it, we played football. and some. I bought my parents' house. So some people that were living in the neighborhood at the time that are still in this neighborhood, um, I found out later on, took that bike and stole it so another so they stole this beautiful bike that my dad saved up for and at the age of 48 mark i can't let it go um so francis buxton the bike thief as much as i love francis i always think of francis it was the same year and i was so furious because my dad saved up for that he bought it for me and it was like and it was stolen two days later so well, no wonder my goodness <laughs> man so That's i feel <laughs> so you're my therapist so I, i'm taking out some frustration so so feel, don't, don't be embarrassed i'm just i'm just venting here n n not really your well, fault no that's that's fine i mean you know the only thing i can can say to you is that <laughs> francis really didn't steal it, <laughs> it, he, hired not, it, it yeah, uh, hey, he probably hired it he hired somebody to do it so um but you i think you i thought i read where the after party for Pee Wee's that involved Alice Cooper, Mr. T, and um, Roddy Dangerfield was a little nutty. Uh, whatever you could say on that, Mark. Uh, oh, that was that was that was crazy. Of course, uh, you know what was going on outside. I was getting into the theater to watch the movie, so I missed uh, a lot of uh, <coughs> the uh, in, uh, MTV interviews. It was, I think, the first time uh, MTV had covered a uh, a live event. A premiere, uh, which which was pretty pretty big because you know MT, MTV at that time was just Huge. exploding. Yeah. So uh, I uh, started looking around me when I got to to my seat, and there's quiet riot over here, who I didn't know what the, were were in the film until I watched it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, 
you know, I, I missed a lot of the stuff going on. I, I was I later saw it uh, 35 years later in the Dallas Theater when uh, Paul Rubens came through there with the uh, anniversary tour. And uh, I went, wow, I had no idea that this much stuff went on before the, you know, the, the uh, projectors, you know, <laughs> started showing the movie. And then afterward, um, I really didn't know what to expect. I think they, they had like a little gazebo set up and lit up of whatever and uh, very far away from, from where I entered. And I think David Lee Roth was being uh, interviewed and Charles Brolin walked by me and I met uh, Connie Selica. And uh, looking into her eyes, uh, I was just a deer in the headlights. <laughs> uh, just melted. I could barely speak. Right. Uh, just almost overcome. Understandably so. <laughs> so I, um, before I even met, you know, anybody like that, they, there was a little bar in the corner. I walked up to the bar and I thought, well, you know, I need a drink. <laughs> so uh, there was a guy in a Hawaiian shirt and another guy just down from him. Little, little bitty bar. Yeah. And I ordered a drink and I, I looked to my left and there's a Rodney Dangerfield. And then I looked to my right and there's Alice Cooper. And so we just kind of started up a conversation. And, uh, you know, I was instantly at ease. You know, I told Alice, I said, the first eight track I ever bought was billion dollar babies. Mm. You know, I can't tell you what this means to stand here and talk to you. And, um, and of course, Rodney is, is, uh, was, <laughs> uh, just, you know, a, a comedic genius or whatever. Legend. But, you know, he said he was, he was really nice. He, he said, how does a kid from Oklahoma end up in a film like the one I just watched? And I don't remember what I told him, uh, but, uh, you know, after that, uh, I think, uh, you know, the, the rest of the conversations with those two guys was kind of us three, you know, going back and forth. And it had nothing to do with film or comedy or music. It was just about everyday life. Mm. So I, 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 I was totally at ease with them after a very short period of time. Right. And then, <coughs> pardon me, um, they had... Uh, Mimes on bicycles built for two, riding around this event. Uh, and uh, I hear this crash bang and turn around <laughs> and Mr. T had commandeered one of the bicycles <laughs> and was just, just having a ball, laughing his ass off and, uh, and went by me and crashed. <laughs> And uh, I, you know, I guess the bike, the bike was okay or whatever, but he just, you know, got going a little bit too fast and, and hit a table and wiped it out. And, uh, you know, he turned around and recognized me and said, you was bad, brother. He gave me a big, you know, <laughs> high five and then went off and to have more fun. So, uh, yeah, little things like that. They, they hit, you know, when you're a kid from small town Oklahoma and, and stuff like that starts to, you know, happening around you. It is surreal. Absolutely. I mean, and, 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 and for those like, uh, I can't imagine who hasn't seen it at this point. It's just such a rewatchable movie too. Um, does the magnitude of the moment hit you? I mean, even years later when you look back at, you know, because you're still acting, but when you look back at some of the work you've done, namely, you know, we're on, we're on, um, you know, Pee Wee's big adventure. Uh, does it, do you realize the magnitude of it during the moment while you're living it? Oh, no. Uh, oh, what now you mean? Yeah. Well, I, I guess it, it's a two, it's a two part question, right? So okay. when you, when you look back at the, at, at the, at the moment versus living it, I, I think the, even with like, just say my life, like moments, I think I, I tend to see more clear the further I get away from it. Did, right. did, did you see it as clear when you were going through it versus, you know, spending yeah. time away from it? I, I think uh, that particular film my life i think i did yeah uh it, it i i knew uh you know uh who i was on screen with and how much it, it meant to me to you know actually meet them and talk with them and find out what wonderful people uh they are uh but uh Pee -Wee's big adventure i i had seen uh, paul one time on a, on a, i think letterman 
and uh, he was, you know, doing the Pee Wee character, and I, I went, this guy's crazy. <laughs> hilarious. Uh, so that was my only frame of reference when I walked into the uh, audition. Uh, and uh, Tim Burton, well, you know, he had done Frank and Weenie, yeah. and I, I'd never heard of Frank and Weenie. So when I, when I walked into that audition, uh, I didn't know what to think. And, uh, you know, I, it's another, you know, uh, kid from a small town story. So I walk in and uh, there's uh, all the producers, the writers, the director, and Paul. And they said, well, we'd like you to read with Paul. And uh, I said, sure. And, and we went through the I know you are, but what am I seeing? <laughs> and uh, said, you know, thanks for coming in. And, uh, and that was that, you know, I, I think, uh, I think by the time I fought my way through traffic, uh, someone had left a, uh, something on my answering machine, you know, called me and they had offered me the role. Jesus. Yeah. I'm going, oh my God. but I didn't know, I didn't know who these people were. I didn't know what it would become. I didn't know that, that this was going to be the formula for a comedy in that time period yeah. that in my humble opinion is only uh, matched by like naked gun. Yeah. It's, it's not dated. It's funny every time I watch it. Yep. And I'm, I'm very, I'm very proud uh, to, to be associated with it. Uh, and, uh, and Paul, because uh, it's, it was, uh, uh, you know, especially after I, uh, we we uh, were talking earlier about me accepting right uh, um, uh, the gift and uh, and doing something with it uh, that that made it uh, you know even even sweeter or you know it 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 continues it's a gift that just keeps on giving and, and Mark that's got to be exhausting I heard you talk about Paul as far as the talk show and you know, <laughs> Paul Rubens for those listening you know he's very much like Andy Kaufman or the late Gilbert Gottfried, uh, the late Andy Kaufman as well. Whereas, you know, he's got to be in this character. That's got to be exhausting after a while. Like he, he kind of carried it with him on many talk shows, right? He, that's got to be something tough to put on a persona in your life, then take it off behind the scene. I mean, I feel like that's, that's difficult. That can be difficult, Mark. Am I looking at that correctly? Well, this is a character that he developed on stage with. Right. Yep. And he, he came up with these, you know, wonderful ideas and, and, and that character was fully developed so he could step in and out of it whenever he wanted to. Okay. Uh, and uh, Paul is very businesslike and detail oriented. Sure. So he was very easy just, you know, in, a, in the snap of a finger to go from one role to the next uh, between takes. Uh, you know, the, the man's a, to a total professional. Yep. He was back then before he exploded yep. uh, on the planet. Um, so I, I don't know how exhausting uh, it, it was for him um, shooting the movie. I don't know, you know, if he's put in other situations like, uh, you know, signing autographs or whatever. I mean, he can't stay in character. He can, he can do a, you know, an, an in costume. Right. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, photo op, but the rest of the time, I understand he, he, he spends a great deal of time with people and listens and talks and, uh, you know, and the people, at, you know, a couple hours back in line are going, come on, come on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I had, I had a guy say, you know, the first time I uh, got Paul's autograph, I was in line for seven hours and I didn't uh. realize I got it. I'm going, damn, you know, Wow. Yeah. Wow. And, and another person that, that should be mentioned more in this movie when people talk about this movie. Um, and I remember when, when hearing that he passed away, I was as devastated as I was when I heard Robin Williams passed away, when uh, Chris Farley passed away. And that's the iconic uh, Phil Hartman. Uh, wonderful talent, a writer on the project. And just a, just a super talent, Mark. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, uh, he was uh, such a good actor and such a funny person yep. and such a lovable man. Uh, we, um, we hit it off. We liked uh, a lot of the same things. Uh, 
Phil was, I guess, an army brat, and he had grown up in Germany, I guess, where his father was stationed. Oh, wow. So uh, he actually uh, started doing stand-up there, and he had a routine uh, that he did uh, in German. And I didn't speak a word of German, but when he started coming out with John Wayne, you know, Verblicht and Yacht, whatever it was, you know, I'm going, God, this is just fucking hilarious. And, uh, and that was back in the day to where, you know, if you uh, – uh, ad admitted that you actually shot an evil gun. Uh, people didn't look at you like a turd in a punch bowl. It was just the way people were. And we went to an, an indoor range and, uh, uh, you know, afterwards, uh, you know, we had, had a great time and we, <laughs> we weren't, uh, we weren't a danger to anybody. Uh, and, but, but just, you know, the few times, uh, before he went to New York where we could sit down, you know, and, and have dinner and have fun and, uh, uh, I, I certainly didn't spend as much time with him as I wish I could have. Uh, but uh, we, we would talk on the phone. And so our relationship was all over the telephone. And uh, then uh, we kind of lost contact after he, he uh, uh, left uh, Saturday Night Live. And, and part of that was my fault. I just I didn't follow up on it because it had been so many years. Right. And um, and then the next thing I know, I, I find out uh, that uh, his wife, who I didn't meet, but I talked to briefly on the phone once yeah. when they had gotten back together, uh, found out that uh, she had killed him with his own pistol. Yeah, that's, so, that's uh, terrible. Yeah. You know, um, you know, during this time when you're when you're in the Teen Wolf kind of um, uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure stage. Were you, did you work non-acting jobs to make ends meet during that time period? So you're doing your acting and then away from acting, you're also working. I mean, you're busting your ass on stay. I mean, on, on screen, off screen. Um, talk about that. I mean, I, I thought I read where you were working some, uh, some non-acting jobs at, you know, when you were, you know, and this is, and this is at a time where, I mean, you're, you're as, you're as popular as anyone and you're, doing odd I, I mean whatever you want to say about that mark would be greatly appreciated oh i i had a, I had a job uh doing clerical work at one point and sometimes it would it, it was something just mundane and, and machine like like here it, here's a giant stack of cards separate the ones that are checked on the right and if any of them are checked on the left put them in a separate pile it was stupid shit like that yeah. and then they had me uh doing a fundraiser at one point for uh, the, the local uh, uh, public television uh, station. And, uh, and that was, uh, that was actually kind of fun at points because I, I'd say, may I speak with, uh, with Mrs. Uh, Schwarzman, please. And they'd say, who is this? And I said, well, uh, you know, I'm, I'm calling about the uh, KOED and, uh, you know, I, I, uh, we appreciate her uh, giving in the past and I just wanted to touch base with her. And, uh, well, you know, until you give me your name, you're not talking to my wife. So, you know, that was, that was fun. And then, you know, you, you finally get the wife on the phone and she said, I don't know. I didn't get those potholders that were promised to me for my donation. Um, so yeah, it, it wasn't horrible. You know, I, I, uh, I worked uh, for a, a buddy of mine that had a recycling business and I'd fill in. And, and that was pretty uneventful, not really yeah. hard until one day uh, we drove way out in the desert and uh, I look over and there's a corral uh, and it's like full of aluminum cans. This guy wanted to, you know, cash in, but he wanted the guy, you know, to come and give him a bargain basement price so he wouldn't have to take them all in. So I hopped over the fence and went ankle deep in pig shit. And, you know, he handed over the rubber, you know, rubber made trash can. So I'm scooping up, you know, can after can after can until till they, you know, when we got down to the, you know, the stuff that was stuck in the pig shit, I just started stepping on it and going, well, you know, he can cut, he can bring that stuff in because I'm done. Yeah. Uh, but uh, my favorite story along those lines was, uh, um, I had a rent house and it was a, an old farmhouse in the San Fernando Valley. Mm -hmm. And then they had built a, a 
some duplexes behind it. And uh, in one of those duplexes, uh, the, uh, well, no, I, I take that back. It was another house. It was like the big farmhouse and then the first son's house. And then the duplexes came later on. Yeah. But uh, we, we kind of hit it off. He was a cabinet maker and I would hang out with him and watch him, you know, work wood. And he said, well, you know, I'm the manager here. Whatever, if you ever need anything, uh, just let me know. And because uh, I need help from time to time. I said, sure, man, hook me up. So, um, you know, co- stuff is constantly going on in rental properties or whatever. So he, you know, he fills some gaps for me, which was really nice. Right. And uh, I think it was the summer that uh, uh, Pee Wee and Teen Wolf had come out uh, and, and maybe a, a couple of other, you know, smaller things and, and, and television shows. Uh, I went, <laughs> went back to one of these uh, uh, units and... Um, they, uh, they had a, a stopped up sewer line. So I had to, uh, I was on my knees and of course I've got an old crappy shirt on. I probably hadn't shaved and, and I'm dipping out turd water trying to get it out of the way. So, you know, my buddy can get a snake in it. And this lady came out on the porch <clears throat> and she's looking at me and she's got her hair up in curlers. Um, and uh, she's smoking a cigarette and said, you know why? you look just like a guy that I took my kids to see at the movies the other day. Wow. And uh, she probably didn't say it with the Oklahoma accent, but anyway, (laughs) but you know, my friend uh, said, that's him. (laughs) And she goes, Oh, bullshit. Turn around and walk back in. (laughs) But I said, don't ever do that again, bud. Don't do that. (laughs) That's great. That is great. You know, and, um, uh, Team Wolf is one of the last couple of things I wanted to ask you about. You know, okay. think about the how much of an, an insane concept this movie is. I remember rewatching this this movie probably with uh, probably two or three went through two or three VHS tapes. I absolutely loved this movie. Like for the it works. Like it has no business working, and it does. It it's beautiful. It's I was I was kind of comparing some of it to Karate Kid and the way it it, it, it works, and it shouldn't work. But it does, and and I don't know. I, I just do you look at it in the same regard that I have for Teen Wolf? I mean, it is just a fascinating movie. It it was just uh, 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 the right formula, the right mix that you know it could have gone a million different ways, but besides the way it went, and uh, the same with Leprechaun. You know, it was, yeah. could have yeah. been more of a comedy. It could have been a, you know a straight up horror film. Um, but uh, you know, yeah, Team Wolf. I'm, I'm, yeah. After I started uh, building my little Instagram page, uh, official Mark Holton uh, plug, plug, plug. It's on the uh, screen, Mark. It's on the screen. I want you to know oh, that people can see it. So I would for- that happen. I would yeah. not. For- I would not forget you, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I started getting contacted by uh, people from Brazil, and then Scotland, and Spain. Wow. And they're saying, you know, uh, you know, Teen Wolf here in Spain is, is like a, you know, a cult film. And, uh, you know, in Scotland, uh, uh, Teen Wolf and Teen Wolf 2 are like cult films. And, I, you know, I'm just blown away, you know, because it, it actually translates to other, uh, you know, countries. And, and uh, I don't know if I should be surprised or not, but I, you know, I certainly, you know, it was blown away to know that. So, uh yeah, I would love to do a like a, a, a tour one of these days and hit the UK and Germany and Spain and and see if I can uh, pay for for part of my airfare. <laughs> I, I I go one further. I would say I'd love to see this because I, I know it was a TV show, but I don't I don't know it it didn't get the vibe for me that that this movie had. But like a funny like what the movie I mean I, I think about the budget this had. Mark it was like it was like so minimal. I think about the idea of this this kid who turns into a wolf in the middle of a basketball game, and by the end of the movie, you are like wanting more. Like you're just, I mean, I, I can't put my finger on it. I mean, it just goes to show there, there's there's when, when they say movie magic, this is movie magic. This is a, this is a perfect movie for me. I love it. Well, uh, the the director, uh, you know, he was a veteran. He had done things like uh, WKRP in Cincinnati. Yeah. 
So, you know, he, he brought, he brought that toolbox to that set. And then, you know, you had Jerry Levine and, and Michael and, and, and some wonderful actors, you know, it's a satellite outside of the team. Yeah. A great bad guy. Uh, and, uh, in my little role that was just, you know, very small to begin with, which was just the fat friend that ate a Twinkie or something, you know, the obligatory, uh, uh, fat buddy in comedies back then, he took the time to develop that character instead of just shooting what was on the page. And, yeah. and Michael got behind that. The next thing I know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, being included in other reindeer games that I didn't sign on for and just, just loving it. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, it wasn't in the script that, you know, uh, Chubby is is involved in in the Beaver victory at the end. Yeah, but uh, it was it was just a it was just a wonderful time. And he's such a great character. He's such a great character. You know, um, let me ask you: do, do you have a number fifty five jersey anywhere? Because I read where I think Michael J. Fox's jersey sold for like thirty grand. Um, but but I got to believe that's a hot commodity. That number fifty five jersey you wore in the movie. Um, I'm I I'm, I'm actually getting t shirts over my. Uh, <clears throat> that are coming across my te- table and, and they're not, they're just t-shirts. They're not jerseys. Gotcha. And I, I, uh, until recently, all you could get uh, that I could find on the internet was uh, number 42, which, you know, was my, Michael's number. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, somebody, uh, it, w- it was actually one of, one of the co- convention uh, creators or whatever, I guess came across this and, and ordered it and was going to wear it at the convention. And it came like a day after the convention was over, uh, but he sent me a picture of it. And he said, this thing, you know, it, 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 it took like six weeks for him to get it. It came from the Orient. Uh, and it was, uh, he paid way too much for it. I'm, I, I think, <clears throat> but I, that is in the works. I want, I want to absolutely make that available. Uh, and uh you got to it, it's, such a, a, yeah. it's such a great looking jersey it's beautiful I want it, yeah i want it to be um at least the quality of a high school basketball team yeah and uh i, I want it to be made in america yeah because yeah. that's just the way i roll absolutely <laughs> absolutely you know and, and i have to say um i thought i read early on um mark where at first, Michael J. Fox wasn't thrilled with the movie, and he wasn't happy. He was, but his tune has, I think, since changed. I mean, this is years ago. Um, mm-hmm. I hope that was never the case, and that's just online chatter and whatever you want to attribute that to. Well, actually, it, it you know, I think Michael's reasons uh, were probably, and and I don't know, he, uh, you know, he'd have to speak for himself on this, but I just suppose that if I suddenly woke up as the star. Uh, back to the future or uh you know in jennifer's case uh leprechaun or she you know wakes up as as this megastar yeah <clears throat> there are going to be films in your filmography that uh you know you, you don't want to focus on so uh i i think there's a little bit of that i mean i know there's there's films out there to where you know if uh, if i'm doing a podcast and they bring it up I'm just going, oh, God, just kill me now. <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, it's, it, you know, it's, they, they've uh, endured with, without their, uh, uh, the support that a lot of people think that they should give the projects. But uh, that's And he, a, was, he, he was, for those listening, he was shuttling back and forth, filming both that and Back to the Future yeah. at the same time. So for those listening, yeah. um, I have to say the one movie that people do not bring up to you enough uh, that I haven't heard. Uh, that's one of my all-time favorites. I mean, it's not a huge part, but it's an important part. The movie My Life is one of the best movies ever made. Like, and I'll challenge anybody to that. Hang Nor is a freaking talent. Michael Keaton is a. I mean, this is one of the more underrated movies, and it's so freaking powerful. Like, how people don't bring this movie up to you more is beyond me. It's 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 one of the the most powerful, sweetest movies I've ever seen, and it's it's not easy to watch. I mean, it's it, it's heartfelt, yeah. but. But it's freaking beautiful, Mark. I thought Ke- Keaton was uh, wonderful. It was a pleasure to work with uh, Nicole Kidman. Uh, I thought Queen Latifah did a wonderful job. Yes, good call. Uh, and, and I'm very, I'm very proud of that movie, and I'm proud of my little contribution to that movie. And you know, 
things just get buried. I, I did a, a film uh, that was titled uh, Return to Cinder. Yeah. And, um, well, you know, it had uh, the Kelly um, Travolta's wife. Uh, Pres Kelly Preston. Yes, Kelly Preston in yeah. it. Aiden, uh, Aiden Quinn. Yeah, as the lead role or whatever, and I had I had a wonderful role where I played a cop, and with my scenes were with Aiden Quinn, and I'm you know, it was shot in Tulsa, Oklahoma. The director was a, a you know con uh, film festival winner uh, for for films like uh, Pele the Conqueror, and uh, I, I thought, wow, well, this this film, you know, I I I think I finally made something that will just lend a little bit of uh, more uh, credibility yeah. uh, to me as an actor. And something happened. I don't know what it was, and I probably will never know. I don't know if it was a political decision, but uh, all of a sudden it just, it changed names. And it, it, it's almost as if it didn't exist. I had to order my, v my uh, DVD copy from Germany. Wow, that's yeah. strange. It's very bizarre. So, geez. Anyway. Um, yeah, so I have to bring up Leprechaun uh, quickly. Uh, I have yeah. to tell you, my dad loved horror. My dad has since passed, but he loved horror. We watched this. Uh, I have to say, Linda Blair and The Exorcist sealed my fate with horror movies. I think that traumatized me forever. Uh, so, but Leprechaun, a oh my god. I mean, and I was looking at your Instagram, as I mentioned, with, with your comment uh, with, in the Comic Con you were at. Boy, that seemed to be a movie that people loved. I saw you signing some autographs on some uh, oh. Leprechaun posters. Um, uh, do you feel like there's a movie more than others that that people bring up, Mark? Or because your filmography is so diverse, there's so much to it. Like, like there's some actors I have that have one great movie, and that's kind of all they do. You've done a great movie, and then another great movie, and then another. I mean, and you're still acting, and and and, and you know, do you find that there's one that's a little more that people gravitate to, or is it just based on the on the fan? Um. The one that surprised me the most was uh, Naked Gun. I had one line. Ah, uh, we're getting and there. That's the last people, one, yeah. Yeah, there were people coming up to me on the street going, look, it's Enrico Palazzo. <laughs> what the hell was that? Yeah. Uh, and I'm still going, what the hell was that? Yeah. But, you know, I, I kind of figured it out you know, after a few decades. Uh, uh, it, it just, it was the right line at the right time. It was just one line, but it was... Uh, it was a magnum punch there, on, you know, in the old comedy gut. Um, but, but the, yeah, uh, but but the one that, that it always comes back to, I, I'd say, uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure would would be uh, probably yeah. the most beloved uh, film, just just strictly based on uh, childhood memories. And then uh, I don't know in what order, uh, Leprechaun. Uh, Teen Wolf, I'd have to put them in there, and then uh, Gacy was fantastic too. I mean, there's Jesus. Yeah. It came uh, along later, and uh, and and I ran I ran into a you know a big tough biker looking dude. It was with his wife, and um, she's picking out a, a a photograph for me to autograph, and she goes, "Hey, he was in Gacy, and he's got on the leathers, and uh, you know he just looks like a badass." Yeah. And she goes, you've seen that, haven't you? He said, no, I haven't seen that. And I thought, okay. He goes, why would I ruin my childhood memory of Francis? <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, you know, that's hilarious. And God bless you, man, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and well, you know, to be quite honest, I have uh, members of, of my own, uh, in my circle of friends and uh, and also in my own family that, uh, yeah, mm, we <laughs> mm, we, just, we just can't do it, Uncle Mark. <laughs> in, in fact, I have never told this story before. I had a neighbor uh, who hadn't seen any of my films. Yep. And, uh, and and that film had just come out. And I had it on, on DVD. And I said, well, I'll, I'll bring over one of my films or whatever. And I'm thinking, well, what would he like? And so I thought, well, I'll just take a copy of Gacy over. Come to find out about a year later, he had his wife drive him over so he could hop out of the car and stick it in front of my door to return it while he knew I was gone. It like flipped him out. You know, he could wow. not stay and, and we weren't, you know, really close friends, friends or whatever, but you know, he, he just 
was is the, that was the most extreme example uh, that that I could possibly give you as somebody that could not separate reality from film. Yeah, and, and what you do, and this is the last thing I'll say. Thank you for all this time, Mark. You're such a good <laughs> man. Thank you for that. Um, oh, thank you. You know, um, wonderful. Oh, thank you. And, and you know, one of the things that that I, I it's a pattern for you in your career is that you make everything memorable, right? So the Naked Gun, one of my all-time favorites, right? You had one line you mentioned, hey, it's Enrico Palazzo. People from ESPN to the any diehard movie fan, they know who you are. So what you have a habit of doing is making movies memorable, right? So even when we look at like Naked Gun, I mean, Leslie Nielsen, George Kennedy, these guys are just icons. And I mean, do you view it that way too? I mean, this even though it's one line, but it's you make everything memorable. There are people who are in movies for two hours that I forget as soon as I leave the theater. Like that was not a memorable performance. You say yeah. one line and it's stuck with it's stuck with people for 35, for like we're, we're getting, you know, and every, it seems like all, this is a pattern with you. Teen Wolf, Pee Wee's Big, like we can go on and on. You make every role memorable. And that as an actor is just all you can really ask for, right? Absolutely. I mean, I, I am uh, blessed beyond measure. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And, and and I hope you're not walking away from acting again. I hope this is something we're sticking with. No, I learned my lesson. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, you know, that, that, that just wasn't in the plan, even though, you know, it was in my plan. It wasn't in the plan. So, uh, yeah, I'm back. Yeah. Good. Good. You talked about your neighbor get, scaring the crap out of him with the, with the, with the Gacy DVD. If you had to pick one movie to watch in your filmography for the last time, or the movie would disappear, which one are you picking? Oh, I don't know. I I, I can't answer that. I don't know. I I, I got I got to tell you, I don't think I can answer that either. So I was hoping you could answer the tough question, not me. So uh, that, uh, Mark, was, that was hard, Derek. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that wasn't fair. That wasn't a fair question, Mark. Uh, for Comic Cons, what's around the corner for you or projects? Anything you want to get out there? Well. Uh... Uh, June, my uh, eldest son is getting married, so uh, nice. June's nice. off the table, and I will be in Indianapolis in July. Congratulations the, uh, for that! I couldn't tell you if it's uh, uh, Indianapolis Horror Con, Days of the Dead. I'm sorry, I do remember. Yeah, uh, and uh, so I'm really looking forward to that. And I and I did uh, the Days of the Dead in Atlanta, so I'll be, you know, seeing some uh, familiar faces, uh, some uh, some uh, some really cool people. So yeah, that's the, that's the next one up, and I, uh, you know, that'll that'll be a, that'll be a fun one. Yeah, and and, and just uh, this will be the last thing I say. The, the guy that gave you a hug and said that you were part of his childhood, just uh -huh. know that there's thousands of people like that out there that really appreciate your work and love your work. Thank you. Yep, Mark. Uh, thank you so much. I hope you come back on again. In a heartbeat, brother. <laughs>